All right, so we're sticking with football here on the Sportsmax Zone. The four remaining teams in the Ray and Nephew Jamaica Premier League will do battle at Sabina Park in Kingston on Sunday. And here are the matchups. Five-time champions Arnett Gardens will take on last season's beaten finalist Cavalier in one tie. While two-time champs Waterhouse will face off against defending champions Mount Pleasant. Well, two showpiece matchups. So we have enlisted our Sportsmax football analyst Leger Williams to preview them. So Leger Sunday, big, big games. I'm going to start with the Mount Pleasant one because a lot of you have given me Mount Pleasant as my team. So let's start there. Mount Pleasant were regular season champions. And of course, this weekend they play. Do you think the rust will affect them because they haven't played for some time? I think initially, especially for the first 30 minutes or so, we'll see them trying to adjust to the, the, the game speed because Waterhouse played two very competitive games you know, over the past couple of weeks while Mount Pleasant have been home training and there's no replication of, uh, of a, a game state as opposed to training. So I think for the first 30 minutes, maybe for the entire first half, we'll see them adjusting. But I think Mount Pleasant have such a deep squad. They have so many quality players. It's going to be pretty difficult for, for the rust to be too evident. I do think that they'll still pull through and they, this game will be extremely competitive as both of their games against Waters were in the regular season. Yeah, and when I think about individual brilliance, I think about Timoni Bailey, Sule Makala, my player, Shaquan Davis, who was on In Case You Missed It. They have individual quality. They've executed as a team also, thus the reason they were able to top the regular season. They go up against a Waterhouse team that cannot be underestimated. Talk to me about the strengths of this Waterhouse team and how you see them lining up against Mount Pleasant. I think Waterhouse in their two games against Mount Pleasant earlier in the season, the regular season, they did a really good job of, you know, Mount Pleasant, as I mentioned, they have a lot of individual quality and yeah. they try to accentuate those qualities by placing those players in really advantageous positions. And then when you have the certain quality players, like you mentioned, Kimoni Bailey, Waters do a really good job of defending the spaces that Bailey would take up, defending the spaces that a Devante Campbell, Daniel Green would take up and try and stop them at source as opposed to giving, you know, those quality players that space. And Waters are a very good defensive team and they have been for quite some time now and they've been doing some really good work, I think, on a defensive front. We saw what they did against Tivoli, yes. keeping a clean sheet against them in the second leg and Tivoli were the highest scoring team coming into the playoffs. So this Waterhouse team are a very good defensive team. I do think that they'll cause Mount Pleasant some problems and this is a Mount Pleasant team as well that we can't forget as in the regular season scored 12 less goals than they did last season. Yeah. So they are a team that's more prioritizing their defense and they did have the most impressive defense in the league but I do think that they, at some points, were over-reliant on set pieces and moments of individual quality to get them through games. So it, it, it's going to be interesting to see how they really develop their attacking unit and what they saw in those two games against Waterhouse, which they did win each of them, one all actually, but it, it, they're going to need more than those performances to get by this iteration of Waterhouse in the playoffs. Yeah, you stress the defence of Waterhouse, but they also have one of the leading goal scorers, Jervain Bryan. He scored two goals recently in the quarterfinals, and I'm expecting him to score again. Yeah, and he's one of the most confident strikers I've you know, really spoken to since I started working here. He, he, he's someone that he believes every game that he's going to score, and that's a very good attitude for a striker to have. And I think Waterhouse, I'm not quite sure how they're going to line up because they were very aggressive against Tivoli. They started four attackers, really, in Andre Fletcher, who also scored in that um, quarterfinal, and he has been impressive all season with 12 goals. And alongside Javain Bryan, and they have Rivaldo Mitchell, and they have Leonardo Gibson. So they do have a host of attacking talent. It's just whether or not they're going to unleash all of them on Mount Pleasant, because I think they'll be giving up some defensive solidity if they were to do that. So it's going to be interesting to see how they line up. But one thing for sure is that if Javain Bryan finds himself in a goal scoring opportunity or with a goal scoring opportunity, he's going to back himself to finish 10 times out of 10. And I think that's the right attitude to have as a striker. And that goes to show why he's been so successful this season. Yeah, I just wanted to expand a little bit more on the point that Mariah brought earlier on about the inactivity. And that would um, pertain to Cavalier as well, who, like Mount Pleasant, have been out for over three weeks. Um, what would a coaching staff do to ensure that 
they can be as much sharp as possible. I know they could play practice matches and so on, but it's it's different, isn't it? I remember in 2017 when Humberland were regular season champions and they lost in the first stage of the the, the their playoffs when they um, played, I think it was Arnett Gardens and lost both matches. In fact, um, the coach at the time, Donovan Duke, had complained that it really hurt his team that you know they had won the league regular season league and then they were sitting down for three weeks not playing any football he felt that helped that helped the op opposition who were who were more active what what would your rep recommendation be for a, a coaching staff like for cavalier and mount pleasant to ensure that the break doesn't negatively impact on these clashes because as we pointed out earlier on the teams that have been playing the quarterfinal stages of the playoff are sharp they are much sharp they are coming off so the edge is on for them yeah i think it's really tough because as i said you can't replicate an in-game scenario by just playing practice matches by just playing you know squad matches for example but i do think that it's important for them to first and foremost match the fitness it's going to be difficult to match the intensity right from minute one against these other teams but i think for cavalier and mount pleasant it's going to be extremely important for them to match the fitness first and foremost i think so that's going to be something so they can last the long haul we're going to see in players after 60 minutes breathing heavily or some something of the sort so that's going to be important but we even saw it last season with Arnett Gardens regular season champions who lost at their first stage of the of the playoffs as well so it, it's tough and and it can be a disadvantage we see it be a, we have seen it be a disadvantage but at the same time if one of those other four teams, the two teams that made it through to the semi-final while playing in the quarter-final stage, if they were to pick up a really bad injury to one of their players, they wouldn't really say that they have the advantage. Yes, so it, it, it is good for being sharp, but I think, especially with, in the case of Mount Pleasant, we know how, how big of a club they are in terms of what they like to do behind the scenes. I, I do think that Mount Pleasant will be pretty sharp. I think Cavalier will be as well. You know, Rudolph Speed is well, well thought of when it comes down to preparing teams. So. I don't think we're going to see too much of a drop-off, but for the first 30 minutes or so, I think both Arnett Gardens and Waterhouse will have, if, if they are willing to go for it, they can have a little bit of advantage in those first 30 minutes. Yeah, well, in the past four seasons or so, Cavalier have been a more consistently good team than Arnett Gardens, but it's always huge, these Kasafa clashes, to see, you know, who are the kings of corporate area football. That Arnett Cavalier showdown looks, looks a classic to me. A team or both teams have very young players, talented players. How, what are the keys to successes for these two teams? Well, that's a that's a good question. I think it that, that that's something that we're going to speak about right before the game as well with the keys to the game. But I, I, I do think, especially for Cavalier, it will be trying to match up to the quickness of this Arnett Gardens team and what they try to do through central areas. But I'm not quite sure if the Arnett Gardens are going to stick to that game plan of attacking central areas against this Cavalier team because Cavalier are so protective of their spine. They, they often play with four centre-backs across the back line. So it's going to be interesting to see what Arnett Gardens do there. For Cavalier, I think it's going to be how they play on the transition because Arnett Gardens have struggled to defend transitional opportunities. As you can see, with a goal like this, yes, it's against Lyme Hall, a team that were relegated, but this is Cavalier's bread and butter. They're the best counter-attacking team in the league and they tore through teams time and time again. They scored the second most goals in the Jamaica Premier League regular season. So it's going to be really integral for them to continue that and for Arnett Gardens going to be key how they defend that. But for Arnett Gardens, as I always say, it's just how they start. When they start quickly, when they impose themselves on teams because of the quality that they have, they can be a really frightening team. Yeah. But the fact that they don't do that most of the time and allow the other team to dictate the game state, that's what really is a, that can be a killer for Arnett and they'll need to start quickly, especially against Cavalier because Cavalier, they're a team that know how to win. And your red and black shirt that you're wearing here on the zone today isn't representative of supporting Arnett Garns, is it? No, this is just a, a sports mark shirt. Oh, it is a sports yeah, it's just a sports mark shirt. If I were to wear this shirt on a Sunday at a game, then yeah. I could understand that. But no, this is just strictly sports mark. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm glad you cleared the air because you're going to have to make your predictions now before you leave. Well, uh, uh, well, if I predict for the first leg at the very least, I think we'll have two very tight games like what we saw in the quarter-final stage. I think we'll probably see a draw in the cavalier Arnett game. They drew their last game in the regular season as well, two all. So I'll predict a draw for them. And for Waterhouse, Mount Pleasant, I'm going to predict a very narrow Mount Pleasant win, either a 2-1 or a 1-0 again, just like what we saw in the regular season. All right, looking forward to see how those games turn out on the weekend. It's break time.